Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington. Uh, my name is Todd and what we have here is a Sundown Audio Salt 12 output board. Um, and just do a little quick clean in here. Um, this is where the fan goes and this is the spot where you're going to get the most accumulation of dirt and stuff. Of course from the fan blowing down on it. But this video is um, going to be about some things that you will notice or may not notice when you fire up an amplifier and sometimes you'll think that everything is A-OK, -okay, good to go. Uh, one of the things that I have stressed about in the past about amplifier repair is thermal imaging. Using a thermal imager to, you know, help track problems or issues. It's, they're really, really a handy, handy device. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I had this SALT-12 all put together, back up and running. Um, what I had to do is I had to rebuild the output. So let me adjust the camera here just a little bit, get a little bit wider view here for you guys. So I replaced all the output transistors, the uh, Zener diodes, drivers. I did everything that, you know, you normally do on rebuilding these. Uh, I'm going to call it the Korean style board. Again, this is a SALT-12. Uh, really nothing drastically different than, say, like a DC Audio Pitbull 20. Okay, uh, there's just really not, there's nothing special about these amps. But what is special is when you fire these up, this does, this fires up, this has output, sounds great, no whines, hums, snaps, or pops. But what I always do when I'm testing amps is I'm always monitoring temperature. Temperature will give you 90% of the status of an amplifier. Uh, so when I originally tested this, back cover was on, uh, amplifier was running and I even shot a little clip a little picture and sent it to the owner of the amplifier saying hey we're alive and well but as I was running my hands across the heat sink I noticed one side was warmer than the other side and I'm like what that's odd why is one side so much warmer than the other I didn't now not hot I'm just saying warm these inductors they do run substantially warm for uh, being a class D amplifier. That's just the nature of the beast here. They run warm and or depending on the load connected, they run hot. So what I did is I, I turned the amplifier off, flipped it over and uh, pulled the cover off. And then I took my good old clear thermal imager and I shot myself an image of the output section of this amplifier. And everything looked great except this inductor. This inductor was stone cold. These guys were running at their normal optimal temperature, just like they should. But this guy was just stone cold. So I'm like, all right. So I bring it back to the bench, fire it up here on my uh, bench power supply and a check. And I have... Uh, switching of course of course I do I would never put it on the load bench without knowing that I'm fully good to go on the switching so before I even put new transistors in I always check to make sure I have low side drive on all four corners that's what I call it four corners it's four separate amplifiers you have high low high low high low high low but I always check before I load up the transistors to make sure I have low side drive on every uh, on each four of the amplifier sections each four corners and I did so I loaded up the transistors got it all together and you know you know me I'm just an immaculate clean on the thermal paste all back together and then I fired up and found that I had one inductor not even heating up stone cold nothing but I had full switching 
so I uh, I started digging around. And the first thing I did is I checked the bottom side. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we got, we've got you know everything is normal. Uh, these snubber resistors did get hot. I think by design they may run hot, or it could have been just this issue that has caused those snubbers to heat up substantially. But uh, I looked around. And I was like, oh, everything looks great. So I fired up my Hako, my FR301 desoldering gun, of course, going around and just checking the solder points on the inductors because I noticed that the solder joints had really flat surfaces. And I'm like, uh huh. So I started checking around. These were good. This one's good. The, uh, inductor coil wires are are they are through they are soldered to the board and then i went over to this one that was cold well check this out yeah that's silicone right there watch this there's my tweezers sticking out of the back of that board <laughs> there is not a single inductor wire strand soldered in that hole at all whatsoever blank open wide open hole there is nothing there more silicone so i flipped it over and i started doing some digging and let's see if i can get you guys down in here look at this look at this Look at this sundown. What is this? What is that? There's my tweezers sticking in the hole where the inductor should be going through. So now the, the owner of this amplifier has to pay for a rebuild of this board due to the manufacturer's uh, sloppiness. This inductor leg, wire, whatever you want to call it, lead is not in the hole. It's silicone down. I don't even know if I can pop that free. The thing with this is, you you know, when you're using tweezers around your inductors, you got to be real careful not to damage the wires. You don't want to short this thing out. You know, I'm trying to get this done for the customer on a Sunday. Yeah, I'm working on a Sunday. Uh, I do believe he wants to uh, go to next weekend's competition with this amplifier. So I'm trying to, I thought for sure I had it, you know, ready to go, good to go, ready. I was doing the thermal testing on it until I found that I had a cold side. Well, now I have an inductor here that is not even, there it is, not even, not even soldered into the hole. And it's not even close. So my problem is, is I got to get that inductor into that hole. And I'm just not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I can see it did the via is still soldered to the end of the wire. So it looks like they must have pulled out. I'm not sure how they managed that. But somehow I got to get this inductor back to where it belongs in the hole where it belongs. But it seems like it is glued down pretty good. So I'm going to have to get creative to get this inductor soldered in place. But I just wanted to point out to you guys that everything may seem okay. It may start. You may have output. It may function like it seems like it should. But... You'll never know when there's a problem if you don't watch temperatures. The temperature, temperature and amplifiers kind of go hand in hand. Uh, so that's just something I wanted to point out uh, to my viewers. Big amp, small amp, it doesn't matter what size amp you have. That uh, always just, if you can or if you're able to, check the temperature of your heat sink. 
in your components. And here's the owner column. Be right back with you. All right, sorry about that. I had the owner of this amplifier actually gave me a call. Um, because I wanted to explain to him that uh, there was a pretty significant issue with this, that it may delay a little bit about picking it up, but I think I can get this back together for him. So that's just something I wanted to point out is uh, temperature can absolutely show you a lot about what's going on with an amplifier. Um, inductors are supposed to run warm. They're not supposed to be stone cold when the other three are warm. And on these drives, don't get intimidated by the uh, the MIC drivers here. This is still a classic IRS 2184 drive. They're just using a TO220 style sized buffer in between the uh, 2184 and the uh, output transistor. So don't let this work or setup intimidate you. It's still a very simple, simple process. I do have a video that uh, shows testing these outside of the board uh, that you can find. Just again, another simple setup. Straightforward design on these. And you're going to find this design on several different amplifiers. But my biggest thing is getting this inductor fixed. Or get it right back down that hole there. You can see it's not even in the hole. So I do thank you guys for watching. Uh, please stay safe. These amplifiers, uh, they are 140 some odd volts, but a massive amount of current behind these things. I mean, banks and banks and banks of capacitors. So please keep your fingers safe. When you're working on amplifiers, let the rails discharge before working on the amplifier so you don't hurt yourself or have a seriously bad day. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this content. Leave your comments down below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. We'll catch you on the next one.